Hi, Dr. Hardison here. This is a video on a detach reattach of the Achilles tendon with excision of the posterior calcaneal spur or retrocalcaneal spur using the knotless, uh, the speed bridge knotless anchor system. I do. Over there. Oh, yeah, should be. I have it on the voice mode like this tracker thing. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. I can still see it. We can't see it. I'll, I'll put it over there. Yeah, I'll put it down. <laughs> no, you're good, dude. Um, Peritinon bluntly and dissect to the tendon proper. I open the peritinon, uh, visualizing the actual gastroenemius aponeurosis. Then I take a 15 blade and very lightly form a strayer uh, incision across the area allowing this to release. Uh, you can feel the release when you're dorsiflexing the <clears throat> ankle joint. Sometimes there are small little septi in there that you have to feel and release as well, as this can hold you up on the, uh, I'm, I'm getting the good motion. Once this is done, I reapproximate the peritinon and then uh, a subcuticular and then a uh, skin incision uh, suturing <clears throat> as you'll see here so I go um, I do the peritoneal and then I'll do the subcuticular and I'll do a running interlocking uh, 4 proline suture for the skin one thing about these I see a lot of these patients use a boot for four weeks it somewhat gets better and then they come back with uh, recalcitrant Achilles tendonitis and a large spur on the back. So I uh, perform quite a few of these as a result of that. The patient uh, just doesn't get better, especially if they're on their feet for long periods of time or if their job is uh, taxing, um, if they're on cement all day or if they have certain shoes that exacerbate this problem, then uh, they look for something to be done more than a boot. At this time I'm going with the uh, Zyscan intraoperative fluoroscopy to mark where the actual spur is. I make a, a lazy L incision from a superior medial to inferior lateral, full thickness flap to uh, spare blood supply in this area as it is quite tenuous. A meticulous dissection is uh, imperative in this area for that particular reason. Uh, once I have this flap uh, somewhat opened and the incision made, there is an area that you can see uh, a plane, as it were, that you go under and you can pretty much release that in a full thickness flap. Uh, in my hands, that's um, how I do it and it works very well. Once I get it open, I have skin hooks retracting and I'll visualize the Achilles tendon proper as it fans out medial and laterally, medially and laterally. I make an inverted T incision and flap or butterfly the two areas of the Achilles tendon uh, superiorly exposing the posterior heel spur and the Hagman's deformity as well. Once I get the incision made in the tendon, I reflect it off the underlying bone and retract it. As you can see here, the inverted T incision, one midline incision and then a transverse incision across the inferior aspect of that, just proximal to the posterior spur that I identified on x-ray and marked. Once I do this and free the spur from the overlying soft tissue, I'll use a uh, I'll use an osteotoma mallet to lightly tap the area, get down through the spur. Once it's through the spur, I pull back on the osteotoma a little bit 
to release it and then I'll take a rangeur and maneuver its way out of that area as it is released <clears throat> I take it out in one big chunk generally speaking then I'll use a uh, reciprocating rasp at a later time here I'm taking off the Hagwins deformity as well I like to have on x-ray a very round uh, even smooth heel as it looks much better to the patient and it's more pleasing to the patient on x-ray as opposed to a straight flat angled cut so once I have the uh, spurs off the spur off and the Haglund's deformity off I use a reciprocating rasp a reciprocating or power rasp and smooth this area uh, completely as I said to a rounded uh, posterior and superior heel and then it's time to drill for drill the holes for the uh, anchors the anchor system uh, that I use is the speed bridge knotless anchor system and it requires four holes two superior and two inferior so here I am drilling the holes with the tissue protector and uh, once those are drilled uh, you tap those holes so that uh, you get the threads catching in the drill hole uh, on the anchor here's the tap I power tap some people hand tap when I power tap I just pulse I just pulse it and let it catch the hole and the angle of the hole and then it goes in on its own it's pretty simple and straightforward and it's much quicker than hand tapping you don't just pull the trigger and go I pulse it to get it to find the actual angle of the drill hole and then it pulls from there much much better than and much quicker than hand tapping so once those are done the superior uh, anchors are placed I put the anchor in tap it with a mallet get it uh, in contact and then hold the handle twist the knob uh, you can then unwind it on the handle put the handle counterclockwise and countersink the actual uh, anchor as you can see when it's when it's countersunk in the bone do both sides one medial one lateral <clears throat> at this time you take the suture and pass it through the proximal tendon in the meat of the tendon on both sides and then you cut the suture where it forms two arms the suture with the ankle I'm sorry with the suture with the needle has one suture and it breaks down into two sutures towards the heel you cut it off at that area where it forms two sutures um, once that is performed I then take an absorbable suture and reapproximate the central um, incision of the Achilles tendon as this keeps this area even if if this is not done with this type of incision in the tendon when you anchor down the tendon there is overlapping in this area and there cause this causes a bulging in the back of the heel and patients do not like that so I reapproximate this incision first the midline incision of the Achilles tendon before I put in the inferior anchors so the inferior anchors you take the sutures one from each side a tiger and a white and you pass them diagonally across into the other into the opposite inferior drill hole you take a uh, mallet and let this anchor find its way again here I'm measuring I pull it tight put the anchor right at the edge of the hole so I know how much of the depth I want my anchor to go pull back to the mark of the pin and put the anchor in and as I tap it in that suture pulls down the distance of the pin mark on the suture again you hold and twist making sure that it is countersunk in the bone so there's no irritation <clears throat> counterclockwise rotation of the handle will show you that uh, the anchor is countersunk and once it is you remove the <clears throat> anchor
anchor and the uh, extra suture. Again, here we are passing that suture through the orange tab. I pull it tight and put the anchor right at the edge of the hole and mark on the laser line on the anchor system itself, which gives me a little bit of room for the anchor to go in. So I pull back to the area of the mark and then put it in, put it in the drill hole and tap it in. Hold and twist. This anchors the suture down in the drill hole. What I'm doing here, I'm trying to let this anchor find its way into the drill hole. Sometimes if you just hammer it in without regard, it can form a new hole and it doesn't work well at all. And you have to use a new anchor. So you kind of lightly tap it, let it find its hole, like I did the actual um, power tap. Once that's done, again, you countersink and pull off the anchor handle and the extra suture. <coughs> Excuse me. At that time, you're done. Here I am cutting the sutures for it to be a truly knotless system. So these are all cut flush with the um, countersunk anchor and then you're finished. Sometimes you need a new blade <laughs> but anyway that um, those are all cut now we flush and close. My closure is I like to reapproximate, and there I am testing it, making sure it's good, which generally there's never a problem. Um, flush it with uh, normal saline, and then my closure, I like to reapproximate the tendon proper with the inferior aspect of the tissue on the heel as best I can to, to get some type of approximation of that tissue like I'm doing here. You have to really be careful to avoid the um, knotless anchor system suture so you don't cut it. Once I do that, um, then I close the subcuticular area with a 4 0 absorbable suture. And then I do um, simple interrupted um, horizontal mattress sutures for the skin. Um, I find that the simple interrupted horizontal uh, mattress sutures really evert the skin edges and it heals very well. As I'm doing here, these are the uh, horizontal mattress which everts the skin edges and allows it to heal very well. These types of procedures are great for the patient, they love them. I put them through PT 100% of the time as this helps get them back to where they want to be soon or, or more expeditiously than they would if they did not do PT um, unless the patient does not want it. If they think they're okay, uh, I don't force it on them, but I recommend it highly and I generally do it the majority of the time. Um, I say 100%. It's all dependent on the patient if they want to do it or if they have time or if they want to make their payments for the uh, physical therapy co-payments or whatever the case may be. But I like to have them in physical therapy as this does really help with um, neurological pain at the incision site, um, some tightness or um, cramping, in the ca cramping in the calf from the gastroc recession. This can help uh, expedite their healing and get them back to where they want to be. Uh, exercising, back on their feet at work, but uh, quicker, that kind of thing. So, that being said, physical therapy works very well. <clears throat> uh, that should be close to it. So, I uh, use, for my bandage, I use a Xeroform, a silver topical uh, petrolatum based coating with a 4x4, quite a bit of 4x4s for padding, curlics, and then I put them in 
uh, cast padding, uh, three or four rolls of cast padding, a uh, four by 30 posterior splint, uh, and a large um, overlying ace wrap uh, there in that for the first week. And then uh, they can, if, if they can get their foot to 90 degrees, I'll put them in a boot and still non weight bearing, however, for the next three weeks as you'll see on my uh, post-operative course. So my cast padding, I'll do three or four rolls of that. And then the uh, puncture splint and ace wrap. My post-operative course is non might bring three to four weeks in the splint first week boot the last three weeks stitches come out weight bearing in a cam boot from there times two weeks and then at six weeks i start physical therapy three times per week for about a month and add from there they can increase activities at six to eight weeks on a treadmill walking uh, stationary bike and then uh, no restrictions at eight to ten weeks and it all depends on the patient sometimes it's sooner but overall if this is a great procedure Thank you for watching and please follow and subscribe for uh, more information on foot and ankle problems. Again, Dr. Lance Hardison, your foot and ankle doc. Have a great day.